Today we're going to talk about putting soda on tap. Not like the soda gun style you find at most bars, but more like the old-fashioned soda fountains from the 1800s. Now we're going to talk about the good points and the bad points. Ideally, if you look at history, the soda fountain actually disappeared and there may be a reason for it, and we're going to talk about it. So let's get started. I'm Darce O'Neill and this is Art of Drink. If you've ever wanted to have like a soda tap, you can do it. It's not that hard, especially if you're just using keg or beer equipment. So I just have a 20 liter corny keg attached to this and my regulator on my carbon dioxide set at, uh, I think it's about 80 PSI right now. I've previously showed you how to rapidly carbonate the water. That's the water we're using today. Basically, I've been working on this for about a month. I've tried all sorts of different taps. This is a flow control device. I don't recommend flow control at the front. I do recommend flow control at the back. Now this is a more expensive device and I don't find it's much better, but uh, anything with a flow control or a, a control thing for beer does not work well. Uh, these are okay. They're basically uh, a regulator that goes right onto the keg. And even if you use lots of beer line, so that's kind of more traditional if you want to slow down your flow rate, you use a lot of beer line. For 60 to 80 PSI, you're gonna need like 40 feet of it, and I can get a little crazy inside your keg. The best thing I've found are these Kegland regulators. Now, these are just basically to, if you have different beers on tap, you can regulate the pressure on each beer to get it into you know, the desired characteristics. But they work with liquids as well, at least according to the manufacturer, not sponsored by them. But basically, if you put this regulator in line between your keg and your tap, you can control the, the flow or the pressure to about 10 to 20 PSI. And that's what you really need. Because if you have, as I've showed in previous video, if you just have 60 PSI come screaming out of this tap, it basically causes a percussion when the liquid hits the glass and all that turbulence decarbonates your water. Uh, leaving kind of a flat drink. So what you really need to do is get the flow right down. And you know, somewhere between tw uh, 10 and 20 PSI seems to be the best. And it is a little bit slow, but the water actually comes out pretty decently. And it does taste good. Uh, it does have that carbonation. But as I mentioned in the intro, there's a reason the soda fountain disappeared and you can get better carbonated water in bottles or cans than you probably could on tap. And the reason is, is that there's just too much going on in these taps. So the outlet poppet on the keg is 6.35 millimeters or a quarter inch, I believe. And then you're going into different lengths or different inner diameters of tubing. And the inner diameter on the flow control device here or the tap is really small. So you have this compression and expansion, compression and expansion of your liquid, and that causes carbon dioxide to go in and out, creating turbulence, which even if you got a perfectly smooth flow, all that turbulence is going to just mix up your carbon dioxide and have it come out when it comes out of your glass. Now, let me show you what it looks like at 20 PSI using one of these just dialed in to somewhere between 10 and 20. I always do recommend a chilled glass anytime you're doing carbonated beverages. As Soon as carbonated water hits a warm glass, you're going to end up with a lot of carbon dioxide coming out. So if you're, I have this set around one degree Celsius, you know, 34 Fahrenheit, somewhere in there. And this glass is chilled to zero. So let's check it out. Now it is fairly slow and you will get kind of the get, you can see the, the pulsating of the gas here. And that is kind of expected just because that's what the gas is going to do. Now, if you hold it up close, you're gonna get less turbulence and that will make a better drink. But it is actually still quite carbonated. You can actually see, I don't know if I can show you here, but you can actually see the carbon dioxide coming off the top. And there are lots of fine small bubbles in here, kind of of the champagne type that people often talk about. So it is holding together. 
Now it's still not good as good as bottled water. And like I said, there's a reason the soda fountain disappeared and it just may be that carbonation out of these is not that good. And I know they used to have soda draft arms, but the more I've played with this and I've looked at old patents and old patents often had flow control devices, just like these ones on here. And in reality, flow control is invented more for the soda fountain than beer and beer eventually started using flow control. So soda fountains had this problem back then in the 1800s and a lot of people tried to fix it. But the reality is, is this is still better than most carbonated water I get out of a soda gun. And there are still some bubbles coming out of this, not a lot. But because of the temperature and the cold glass, it still has that carbonated flavor. And this would be excellent in a mojito uh, if you were to go that route. But in reality, bottled is best. So let me show you a comparison with canned carbonated water. I'll just move a few things. Now this is just your standard club soda. And if I were to pour it into the glass, you're going to see kind of more of that rapid bubbling as opposed to the still water that it seems to be doing. Again, the, the flow out of the tap just disturbs the carbonation too much. Now this doesn't mean you can't use this for bottling and that's something we're going to talk about uh, which is counter pressure filling because the counter pressure prevents this percussion when it hits the glass. So you basically pressurize your bottle before you fill it and you'll get really good carbonation. That's actually going to be the next video is how to make bottled carbonated water at 60 PSI or that champagne level. As you can see, we're still getting carbonation coming out of this and it's those bubbles that are rising that people want in their drink. If you wonder why there's so many cans, so many bottles, and you don't see many soda fountains, uh, it's an honest hard truth that this does not do the best carbonated water. Sorry if I let you down on this one, but I might save you a lot of work. We're still going to use this apparatus for bottling. I am still going to make root beer, put it in a keg and bottle it that way or whatever sodas I want to bottle because we still need this. But as for just dispensing carbonated water into a glass with syrup, it's not going to be your best option. So in the next video, we'll talk about counter pressure bottle filling and how to make really good carbonated water using a bottle. So I'll see you in the next one.